Let's start the day off today talking about um, shorthand notation of describing a chemical change or uh, a chemical process occurring. So um, in this case, uh, this is the shorthand uh, notation that we as chemists use. We call it a chemical equation. In this case, um, we're showing a reaction as opposed to a physical change, so a chemical change. How do I know that? It's because I'm having one substance, mercury 2 oxide, um, go to um, a different substance, make a different substance that's mercury and oxygen. Okay? So um, there are some essential features to this that we'll get into in a second, but I want to step back and uh, recall that in the various or in the past couple of weeks uh, that you've been taking this class, you've seen chemical processes happen in the lab, you've uh, talked about them, things like that, but we've never actually written them in shorthand uh, how we do in chemi chemistry class, okay? So um, there, this is the shorthand version of it, and we're going to have these essential features that you have to understand um, about this uh, shorthand way of writing it. Well, anyways, the first essential feature that you need to know is this thing in the middle is called the reaction arrow. And that reaction arrow just tells us that some change has happened. Okay, a chemical or physical change. In this case, it's a chemical change. To the left of the reaction arrow, you've got one set of molecules or um, uh, compounds, atoms, compounds, particles, okay? To the left of it, we've got what we call the reactants. These are what was present in the, um, in the mixture before anything happened, present in your reaction vessel before anything happened. Okay? On the right of the reaction arrow, we've got the products. So this is what happened after whatever happened in the reaction arrow took place. Okay? So in this case we've got uh, one reactant and two products. So there's also this little triangle above the reaction arrow. Um, so that's like where you put the reaction conditions. In this case, we have the, the triangle there, that means heat, okay, or energy is given to this um, process. So if I put a bunch of, if I put mercury 2 oxide under a bunch of heat, Right, it's going to decompose into mercury and oxygen. That's what this is telling me. There's also some other essential features. In front of the various um, particles in the reaction equation, um, at least a couple of them, there are these numbers. And in fact, there's nothing in front of there. Okay. Those numbers are called coefficients. That's a coefficient, that's a coefficient, and in fact, that's a coefficient too. Okay, it's implied that it's one. If it's one, you don't put anything in there. The coefficient just tells us that two molecules of mercury 2 oxide decompose to form two atoms of mercury and one molecule of oxygen. Remember, this two subscript in oxygen just means that there's two oxygen atoms bonded together to form the molecule O2. And you guys know that from the Vesper theory. And I guess the last um, thing that I can see in this reaction equation that we haven't gone over are these things. Okay? So after each particle in the reaction equation, there's this parentheses with a letter inside of it. OK? 
Okay? And those letters are either going to be S, L, G, or A, Q. Okay? S stands for solid. So mercury 2 oxide is a solid. When it decomposes, it forms mercury, metal, which is a liquid, and oxygen, O2, which is a gas. There's another one that isn't shown in this equation. It's called um, aqueous. And this is when you form a solution where water is the solvent. We'll talk more about that later. Okay, so these are the essential features of a chemical equation.